Hey guys, Mars Singer here bringing another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video. And so earlier today, we got the news on JP, uh, well, the news, I say, a teaser, that the next Dokkan Fest exclusive coming out on the JP version is going to be the Tournament of Power Android 17 and 18. And of course, that leads us now to speculating. I did mention a little bit about this in the video I put out earlier this morning. But this kind of leads us to speculate as to what is going to happen with Global. Because if we are now at the point where, you know, the new Dokkan Fest or the next event coming out after the Worldwide is being teased in the news of the game, then this means that we should very likely see the one for Global coming up very soon. Like at the time that this video goes up, um, if you're watching this the exact minute it goes up, it's going to be uploaded at 7.30 p.m. UK time. That means that it will be 12 hours from the time that this video goes up that we should, in theory, see a teaser in the news on the global side for the next Dokkan Fest. Now, obviously for global, it's not going to be so much of a, like, who is this, you know, mysterious new Dokkan Fest that we're going to be getting, right? Uh, it's going to be a case of who are we getting out of the multiple different options that we are expecting. Now, one thing to stress straight away is... We obviously know the sequence of events from JP. However, two major things come into play. One, Global often changes the order of releases seemingly for no reason. Uh, last year, they swapped the order of Pan and the Resurrection of F Blues. Um, and of course, there is the fact that we know in some way, shape or form, the versions are going to sync at some point in the near future. But we have no idea what that means for a post worldwide celebration global like are they going to start bringing out more things at once are they going to start shortening the gap between celebrations to catch up that way um, we don't really know so all we can really go by and we're going to talk about in this video is the stuff that we do know is out on jp that is not out on global so if we go by the timeline of releases, if we were to follow JP's release order exactly, then the potential teaser that we would see tomorrow in the news is going to be for physical Dokkan Fest Turles. Now, this Turles is actually really good. I think he got super underrated when he came out. Um, his biggest issue, of course, is that he's locked behind fighting a Goku family enemy or an enemy whose name includes Kid Gohan. Um, that's how he gets his entrance animation. And not only is his entrance animation super cool, and the OST is really good as well, he then gives all extreme class allies 3 key and 18% attack uh, for the rest of the battle, which is a pretty good little buff, uh, especially the key, if you've got a team that has a bunch of LRs. But you only get this against a Goku family character, which, even with the worldwide celebration bringing in some events where you fight super type units, uh, one of them is, what, Goku and Vegeta, then the first difficult one really was uh, Vegito Blue, and then we get Trunks, none of which are Goku family characters, or include Kid Gohan in the name, right? So very, very disappointing that he's locked out of that for a lot of uh, events, in the, most events. Um, however, he is pretty decent, like he gets decent stats, uh, he gets a bunch of extra attack uh, and has uh, an additional with a high chance to super if you're above 50% HP. He gets uh, a bunch of extra attack when he supers. He gets extra key and damage reduction and defense with each super attack performed. He's attacked effective against all types and launches another additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super starting from the turn in which he performs the sixth attack. So, I mean, if you get lucky in the early turns, like you can get three attacks per turn if you get the hidden potential, right? So on the second turn, if you got three attacks again, um, this says starting from the turn in which you perform the sixth attack. So in theory, once he performs that sixth attack on that turn, um, you would then get this buff. Um, and he should, I think, then launch this other attack that has a high chance to become a super. So, I mean, he can definitely be very good. He raises attack infinitely. So I have seen him build up to some pretty decent attack stats. He also heals on super. So if you're getting turns where he does multiple additional super attacks, then you're getting a decent amount of health. Um, again, his biggest problem, and it's funny because we talked about the LR Rosé EZA from today, his biggest problem is that especially early on, like he just does not have the defense to be able to take super attacks, right? Like fully built up, he has a reasonable level of raw defense and then he has 20% damage reduction, which isn't the craziest amount, um, but you know, he uh, definitely can do very well. He has an active skill. Greatly raises attack temporarily and does ultimate damage. Uh, can be activated from the start of the third turn when there's a Goku family enemy or an enemy whose name includes Kid Gohan. 
or can be activated from the sixth turn. So at least you can use the active skill, because otherwise it has the annoying condition just like the intro, but you can use it on turn six, which again, funnily enough, going back to the discussion about LR Rosé and his rage mode, turn six, kind of annoying, right? In some of these newer, shorter events that are just very difficult right from the get-go, you're not necessarily going to be able to even see turn six with some of these teams, right? So that is definitely uh, a little bit unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I mean, his link set is good, right? Turles being a Saiyan unit, big bad bosses, thirst for conquest, brutal beatdown. Um, he of course has the Turles specific links like destroyer of the universe, which is actually a really, really good link. Um, it's just, he only shares it with like the other Turles units. However, I do believe his banner units, um, share the uh, link as well and his banner units are actually very good they kind of gave him the ginyu treatment right where he has two banner units and if you pull both of them they work really really well on his team i forget which one is which but one of them is basically like raccoon and gordo where they are really good slot one tank um so his team can function pretty well his celebration also brings like an easy a for the great ape turles who's pretty good so this guy could definitely be one of the teasers that we see um and of course his celebration had a bunch of stuff including the part two lr um, in base spirit bomb goku although he's probably an easy skip for a lot of people but the main thrust of this i mean we can talk about if he is coming out right we can do a bit more once we know tomorrow who it's going to be in that video where i say like hey we got the news update and here it is i'll go into more detail about the celebration but since we don't know which one it's going to be yet i'm just kind of covering the main dokon fest that the teaser will be for right so if it's not turles the other uh, option is of course the super trunks who was the last Ocon Fest exclusive released on JP before the worldwide celebration. So if you don't count the LR, because we are going to talk about full power Super Saiyan 4 Goku, these two are the only two Ocon Fest exclusive TURs that are on JP and not on Global. So obviously this Trunks is a Mastered Evolution or Android Sash Cell Saga leader. I actually didn't even mention Turles' leader skill, by the way. is Space Traveling Warriors or Pure Saiyans. A lot of people were disappointed about his lead because we don't really need another Pure Saiyan leader, especially like extreme types. We want more varying extreme teams. Um, his 30% is Planetary Destruction or Low Class Warrior. So, I mean, you can make a good Space Traveling Warriors and Planetary Destruction, like 200% team. And then this guy ideally would be there to be the support but he's not giving his support unless you're in the right event, right? But his leader skill is okay. Um, and then, yeah, this Trunks is Mastered Evolution or Android Slash Cell Saga with 30% to Rapid Growth or Earthbred Fighters. So if you think about some of the buffs that we just got from the Worldwide Celebration, obviously we have units like the uh, STRLR Future Gohan, who's going to be on this guy's 200% lead. Uh, probably one of the better units on the team. This guy got a significant buff from the Worldwide Celebration because... He gets some key and some stats, then he gets an additional attack and defense 100%, launches an additional attack that has a great chance to become a super and a high chance to guard with three or more android slash cell saga allies. So again, future Gohan and those kind, they are that part, like the future Gohan special, is counted as part of the android slash cell saga. So this guy is on there. Um, obviously, like the tech future Gohan Easy A is on there. The int future Gohan Easy A that is really good is on there. Um, so he has a lot of units you can run with him now to get that part of his passive active that are actually good and are not sort of weighing the team down. Um, unfortunately, though, it does only give him a high chance to guard, which is 50%. So as we all know, like chance to guard can absolutely let you down, fraud you out and he can get killed. But otherwise, you know, pretty good, right? 150 defense start turn and then 100% on super. Um, as you know, so the extra 100% is from the allies and then he gets 70% when performing a super. So his post super defense is decent and then if he is guarding, then obviously he's going to look a little bit better. He also gets attacks effective against all types against an enemy whose name includes Cell, but obviously, I mean, I guess there is that red zone stage, right, from the new set, but um, not really that useful overall. Um, and then he has a couple of interesting mechanics like I do want to like this drug so I haven't got to try him out really I didn't use him on the private server or anything so I haven't played with him on JP I know a lot of people don't like him but a lot of people do he's a very uh what's the word I'm looking for here very divisive unit on JP because he has some interesting tech right so before we talk about his transformation he has an active skill that you can use in this form uh, it's kind of like the Krillin and Gohan LR, right? He has an active skill that you can use in this form that greatly raises attack temporarily, does ultimate damage to the enemy, and disables one of the enemy actions, right? 
So it's like any active skill, it'll be like the first attack of the turn. Disables the action, you do a bit of damage, very, very good. And then, after performing five or more attacks, or starting from the fifth turn when there's an enemy whose name includes Cell, you can transform into Super Trunks. Um, and then when you transform into Super Trunks, not only do you get um, like way higher stats, like Super Trunks himself, like if he came out as just Super Trunks straight away from turn one, I think everyone would really like this unit. Like he is really good when he is Super Trunks, right? He raises attack and defense in one turn, does immense damage, gets guaranteed crits. Um, then he has 300% stats, launches an additional super and guards all attacks for three turns. So guard guaranteed and a guaranteed additional super, which again is going to be a guaranteed crit. Then you get additional attack and defense boost up to 200% depending on your HP. The more HP you have, the more boost. And then you get an additional attack and defense 100% when performing a super. So in total, if you're on full health, he's getting like 600, like it's actually insane the amount of damage he can do. Um, and then he also stuns guaranteed with his super. So he's very much like Super Vegeta, right? Guaranteed crit, guaranteed stun. And then the active skill that you can see, it has the same name. It's the same animation, basically, apart from Trunks being Super Trunks now instead of the normal Trunks. But it's also slightly different. Massively raise attack temporarily, ultimate damage, but then delay enemy attacks for one turn. That is the Ghost Usher of like the Androids or PyCon. And then all attacks become critical hits, which obviously crits on his supers anyway, but it means if he gets additional normals, they will all be crits. And this will be a crit as well. But this active skill can be used when he transforms into super trunks if you've already used it in the base form. So you can use it here, then on the next turn, transform. And then, well, it's actually an active skill. So you, um... no, sorry, the transformation is not an active skill. This is an active skill. So you use this, then he transforms on the next turn. Then, when he's transformed, you can use it again, and it gives you a Ghost Usher. So if you're running a double Trunks team, you can really use that Ghost Usher to your benefit. Um, and that can be activated when HP is 60% or more, or when there's an enemy whose name includes Cell. So on the next turn, after transforming, so you get to this guy on, like, turn 3, you use the active skill, because it's third turn when HP is 60% or more, use the active skill, Transform on the next turn, and if you're on 60% or more, as soon as you've transformed on that next turn, you use this one. And Ghost Usher, do some extra damage, all crits. Then he's pumping out this massive attack stat, big crits. He only gets the guard for three turns, so it's kind of like when he transforms into this, you want to use the uh, three-turn guard for as much as you can. And then I would say maybe after the guard runs out, if the fight is still going, use the Ghost Usher to keep him protected, but... Trunks can be good, right? But it's the Super Trunks part of the card that is the best. Um, so he is uh, obviously going to be the um, big potential for uh, this next Dokkan Fest. It's either going to be him or Turles. Or, of course, the thing that we've discussed in the past, and we talked about it on our po podcast, the Slot 1 Super Podcast, every Friday. Um, what if they did a banner where we just got both of these guys at the same time to push up the thing? Or we get a dual Dokkan Fest, right? Could be very strange. Like, if we take a look at their banner, so Turles's banner is actually pretty good. Turles and his two new side units, and then it was the first return of Yamcha and the first return of Bardock. Which, I mean, both of these guys, I mean, Yamcha can still do pretty well. Bardock has been pretty horribly aged out by the new content that came out from the Worldwide Celebration. Scouter can still be useful, but like, post-Super, he's taking a lot of damage from these guys because he takes a couple of turns to build up. And as we all know, these new Dismal Future Red Zone stages do not are not catered to units that need to build up. Then we have the OG Turles, who with his EZA, I mean, he can be kind of somewhat runnable, sort of. Um, and then Bojack, obviously pretty old at this point, needs his EZA. Um, and then the Super Trunks banner is Trunks, an STR Gohan who's uh, terrible, apparently. Everyone was just, apparently he's just awful. Um, never got a chance to use him, of course. And then it's the first return of the STR 17s. Then we have Margin Vegeta, Super Vegeta, the AGL Trunks, AGL Kid Gohan. Now, if you imagine them, like, putting these two banners together, most of these Dokkan Fest banners now are having, what, eight featured units? Does this one have eight as well in terms of featured SSRs? This one only has seven. So if we were looking at like eight or seven featured SSRs in total, imagine if we got a banner that had Turles, then it's, uh, oh God, I can't remember the, oh, there you go, it's going to show me. Uh, Dyes, or it's not Diaz, it's like Dyes and Cacao, and then uh, Amand and Raisins, so that's three, right? Then Trunks and Gohan, so that's five. Then Yamcha, Bardock, that puts us to seven, and then the 17s at eight. 
That banner would be kinda insane, like, for value, for people missing a bunch of those units, right? Because it would be the first return of the 17s, Bardock and Yamcha, all on the same banner, and then Turles and Trunks would be there as well. So even if you just wanted to summon for Turles or Trunks, or you didn't want to summon for either of them, Bardock, Yamcha and the 17s would all be available with red coins. And then we wouldn't have to worry about these older units. Because, I mean, Marjan Vegeta, there might be people that still want some dudes for him, maybe. He can be kind of runnable still in certain setups. Super Vegeta and Trunks and Gohan, not really so much anymore. And then, obviously, Turles, kind of, but who cares? Same with Bojack, is a bit out to it too outdated now. So, like, losing all these old SSRs that are normally the units on a banner that you don't care about anyway would actually be kind of cool. Um, now, obviously, if you're someone who really wants Turles but you really don't care about Trunks or you really want Trunks and don't care about Turles, that situation would be kind of bad for you, right? Because you could pull the one you don't want or you could pull, like, Trunks and then pull the Turles side banner units or pull Turles and then pull, like, Gohan and not his side banner units. So I don't know if that's the way I would prefer them to do it. A dual Dokon Fest would be interesting. So it's just both the banners at the same time. And then you just pick, like, if you want to summon on them. Obviously, the 17s and Bardock and Yamcha would be in the red coin shop. So that would be kind of interesting. Um, so we could potentially see that. Like, the teaser in the news tomorrow, legitimately, imagine if it was the teaser for, like, a new Dokon Fest is coming, the Turles one, and then... The second, like, news bit, a new Dokon Fest is coming and the Trunks one. And whether it's dual Dokon Fest or one banner, we are actually getting both. That would be kind of insane. And then the one thing I did say I would mention very briefly is obviously Full Power Super Saiyan 4 Goku. He was the Tanabata Dokon Fest exclusive LR. The Tanabata is typically in November, the end of November for Global. Um, but again, if they're going to be doing some stuff to move things around because of the sync and all that kind of stuff, maybe he gets moved up. Imagine if the teaser is him coming out like this week that would be kind of crazy um but yeah i mean i don't know as we've talked about in the past one piece treasure cruise did this crazy thing where they synced their versions where they just brought out a banner that had every single unit that global was missing like imagine if we got some crazy banner that had this guy um and then trunks oh that's the gohan i don't need him up he's bad uh imagine if a banner came out that had this guy and then Trunks and Turles all on the same banner. A lot of people, I think, would not like that because there are a lot of people I know want to summon for Goku and probably don't care about Trunks or Turles. But that definitely could be very interesting. Um, or, like I say, I think it's unlikely. I think Tanabata probably stays roughly where it is unless they're accelerating the timeline. But this coming out early is definitely not impossible. Um, and his banner is him, a side banner baby, who I don't think is particularly good. Uh, Trunks and Vegeta, like previous Tanabata units, right? El Argo Gita and the Blue Boys. Maybe they'll get an easy A in the TOP 17 and 18 celebration. Talked about that in the video earlier today. But it's also the return of the Gammas again as well, both on the same banner. Because remember, for the anniversary, they were on separate banners. Um, and so I ended up, I think I rainbowed Gamma 1, but I still need two dupes of Gamma 2. So I'm definitely looking forward to this banner. Uh, I really want the Goku. Um, I don't need anybody else on the banner except for the Gamma 2 and obviously the Baby. But... Should be interesting. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. What do you think we will see in the news tomorrow? Is it going to be a teaser for Turles? Is it going to be a teaser for Trunks? Would it be a crazy thing and be a teaser for Goku? Or is it going to be some weird combination of both of these guys? Or even all three? Who really knows at this point? So let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been The Masked Ningen. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.